Hi everybody, this is Marlene with Miami Ghost Chronicles Stories of the Supernatural. And I hope you enjoy this new show, whether you're viewing it on the internet or listening to a podcast version of the episode. I do want to thank you for being part of my audience. You can also find links to videos or podcasts on MiamiGhostChronicles.com as well as where you can submit your story about any eerie experiences you've had which I would love to hear about. Just go to the Submit Your Story tab. Please subscribe to our channel so that you receive notification of when we release a new show. And find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. This is where I usually live stream and where I give you a behind-the-scenes look at locations where new episodes are being filmed at. I also tell you about all the interesting guests that will be appearing soon on Stories of the Supernatural. I hope you enjoy the show, and I think you are all wonderful. Hi, everybody. This is Marlene with Miami Ghost Chronicle Stories of the Supernatural. How's everybody doing? Anyway, guys, I tried to do a live stream, and I don't know. Uh, my bandwidth was hurting, and after two attempts, I said, enough. So here I am pre-recording it, but I'm going to release it as soon as we're done. And I'm very excited because I have with me uh, a good friend of mine, and we're going to call her Sam because even though she's retired law enforcement, she's still involved in some sensitive stuff and um, as a matter of fact, a few months back, we did a Q&A about sadists and serial killers. But the reason why I wanted to have her come in and talk about her own personal experience is that I've known her for several years. And she, along the years, has had, if not encounters with ghosts or anything, just unusual things that sometimes she would talk to me about. Because, you know, sometimes you're just at certain places uh, that unusual things happen to you and no matter how much you want to rationalize it you realize I can't rationalize this there's no explanation and she I remember throughout the years she's told me of different uh, situations or experiences she's had that even now if if you if we she can't identify them as out and out paranormal there's like a big question mark over like what exactly was this about but anyway hey Sam how are you doing today can you hear me okay yes I'm good. I'm doing good. How are you? Great. Fantastic. And um, I was, uh, I know that throughout the years, you've had a lot of different experiences, you know, doesn't have to be supernatural, just unusual stuff. And um, because one of the things, you know, everybody thinks that is that sometimes a lot of people see police officers uh, in a vehicle with another, but there's a lot of times where police officers are just by themselves, right? Most of the time, yes. We, we are um, a small agency, pretty understaffed, so we're usually on our own in our vehicles and only when necessary will to um, respond to anything at the same time. Okay, so, yeah, so, which is, that's the, the, the and that's, I guess, what I, what, where I go with that is that sometimes when you're with another person, you go to the other person, did you see that or did you hear that? But when there's no other person to find out, did you hear that? Did you see that? Basically, you are like, okay, what was exactly. that? Exactly. <laughs> and you're, you're alone to figure it out on your own. <laughs> right, right, exactly. And that's what it ends up happening Um and I'm saying, like, when you go through your checklist, okay, it's not this, it's not this, it's not this, it's not this. So I know you've told me a lot about your experiences throughout the years, but thinking back, what was one of the, the times or something that happened that occurred to you that that either right then and there you knew something was up or that later on, because sometimes a lot of these things you realize them after, after the fact, that you think back and you go, wow, that 
something was going on there. Well, the the major one that went on for many years was um, an incident that I was involved in, 2001-2002, uh, which was a uh, murder-suicide okay. where the husband had, uh, I happened to be there, and the husband had murdered his wife. Wow. I was not on a call, just happened to be in one of the neighbor's houses just having conversation, and the gentleman had stepped out. You don't, You did not hear that they actually had a gunshot had taken place inside the house because he uh, actually muffled it by putting it up to her. So all you heard was animals going crazy, dogs, birds, and everything. So I uh, saw a knock at a neighbor's house. So I approached him, and at that point is when he actually pulled a gun on me. Um, I was able to to jump behind uh, a vehicle, and uh, once he lost sight of me, he did uh, take his own life. Uh, at that wow. point, I did go into the house and found that he had indeed um, killed his wife. Uh, moving forward from that, it was, you know, unfortunately, they, they uh, both passed away. Um, right. There was no children. They were a little bit of an older couple, had been together for many, many years. Okay. But that house, um, they were renters. Okay. Uh, the home was uh, owned by someone else. And as the years go by, the house continued to stay empty. Really? Um, my entire career and as of today that I know, that house is still vacant. No one has ever rented. Same people still own it. And um, it's just never been occupied after that murder-suicide. And I want to tell you about five years ago, uh, working nights, curiosity. Uh, I was curious. And now, you know, they have an app for everything. So they had one of those apps that, um, that works as almost like the, those, those, uh, I forgot what those, uh, they're called the ones that tell you the one words or two words. Right. Um, yes. I know which one you're, t- I know what you're talking about. As a about. paranormal. Right, exactly. They almost, yeah, they almost uh, are like an ovulus in the sense that, yes, I know what you're talking about. So I decided to, to download it. It was about three in the morning. And, you know, I pulled up in <laughs> front of the house. the right time to and, do that. Yeah, exactly. By myself, three in the morning. <laughs> and um, I said, well, let me park right in front of the house and hold my phone out the window and see what happens. Well, sure enough, uh, I do that, and uh, the phone all of a sudden says, get out. So, oh, oh I God. got out. <laughs> I it was like, okay, for someone thanks. else to just be with somebody else. Yeah, I was, I was surprised, and I've actually always had an eerie feeling every time we've had to uh, go search that house. And the unusual thing from that house, right? not only does – the nine 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 one one, but also the and receives calls from this house that is not occupied. Are you serious? To this day, it continues to receive nine one one calls with no one on the other side of the line. And every time officers responded, there's nobody living there. There's nobody in the home, but it continues to call not only the nine one one system, but the actual station with the full um, ten digit number. Right. In other words, it's not being sent because of the nine one one. You know how it will direct it to the to the police police department that it's supposed to. It's an actual, like if they were dialing straight into the station, is what you're saying. Correct. Wow. Correct. <laughs> so uh, and, that, and, that's and let an me ask you because the, this this couple was there prior to him doing that murder suicide, which you were very lucky because it was not the first time. That somebody that gets into that frame of mind, he's ready to take other people with him. Uh, they, he, he, you, they, you had a little bit of history about them before, right? As far as that, he was not such a nice guy. Yes, I had heard that he had been a very nice man, other than when he had been drinking. When he was drinking, he was horrible uh, neighbor to uh, to the people around. But because he was such a nice man when he was sober, no one ever called the police on him. Oh, wow. Like everybody gave him a pass because they were thinking, okay, he does this the because alcohol. of the alcohol. Yeah. Yes. And uh, it came out that he, he was heavily armed. He, he owned a lot of, of firearms. And he had actually given his wife 
a timeline as to when he was going to kill her by, which and, should have been a sign for her. And he had pulled guns on the family members in the past, but no one ever called. No one ever had called. And all the signs were there. Took I mean, yes. And let me ask you, why <laughs> did, do, do you know why he decided to do that at that time? Um, he was terminally ill. He had already been told that he was terminally ill, and he had had an argument on that day with his wife over a minor bill. Okay. Yeah, in other words, it wasn't... I'm sure he wasn't such a nice guy to live with anyway, but because how can you tell somebody, I'm going to kill you, and unfortunately, maybe... What do you think? Do you think she didn't believe him, or she was one of these that just was... I've been victimized by him maybe so long. Like, because it's got to be like mental abuse. You start telling somebody, hey, I'm going to do this. I can imagine. I wonder how those family members felt when he actually did it. I... Yeah, they had been together for over 30 years. And from what I have understood, yeah. that he was verbally abusive that entire time. Right. So she probably just was so used to hearing it that she no longer took him serious. Right. And that's the thing. And from what I understand, a lot of times in those scenarios, despite the fact that he's uh, seemed to be an unhappy guy, plus really unhappy because he got sick to him, there was nothing worse than leaving behind his wife to be alive and he not be around. In other words, you're going with me. That's horrible. Yeah. And let me ask you, do you think is it is it that the owners haven't attempted to rent it out at all or... Do you know why nobody's ever moved in there again? I've, I've, I ha- don't know. I mean, I know that the house had been put up for sale and it never sold. Okay. I don't know, maybe because of the disclosing of what occurred there, but also it's just never been rented. I, I right. In other never words, never been in contact with the actual property owners to even inquire about it. Yeah, because I was gonna say we're look. If this happened, what, uh, 2001, we're almost, someone's almost going to be like 20 years. And I know that that area that that house is at, because I know what area you, you covered during that time. That's a very desirable area to live in for residents. Absolutely. It's like, that's prime real estate where you're at. And the fact that he has not been able to sell it or rent it, one of the two, makes you wonder like, what is going on with that? That's very unusual. Wow. Wow. So I could say, you know, sometimes you think, okay, when these things happen, maybe for the first couple of years, you know, the owners think, you know, I'm going to sit on this because if I try to sell it, you know, people will know about what happened and I'll lose money or same thing with a rental. Like, okay, let me let it die down. But this is a lot of years have, ha- have gone by. Yes. I mean, they maintain the property. You, yeah. you could, It doesn't look like an abandoned, it didn't look like right. an abandoned property. You know, that lawn men would keep the grass cut and uh, the the exterior always stayed nice and clean. I, mean, I don't know what the interior look looked like, right. but the, the, on the outside, it looked like a house that, you know, it was being occupied and was being used, but it wasn't the, the last I knew the neighbors used to put their, their some of their vehicles in front of that house. So it did not look vacant. Right. Exactly. And I know, I know because of the area that you lived that they wouldn't let them like, let him let the, 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 basically the property, look trashy and that thing that you said about getting 911 calls is it how how is it at nights in the daytime is it or is it just randomly um i I, it's in the evening hours not midnight hours not day hours like afternoon hours i would say like you know dinner time hours and wow recalling back now that you you're talking about this that's when the incident occurred. I was about to ask. That. That's exactly what I was about yes. to ask. Does this coincide around the time yes. that this happened? Wow. Mm-hmm. Even it, though a 911 call never went out that night. Right. Exactly. But at the same time, if you think about it, it's almost like 911 is the universal sign for help. Like, as far as when you need help. And I know what you're saying because who who was it that called the police? A neighbor or what? No, no one. I happened to be there. Oh I'm the God. one that you're kidding. said it on the radio. I was there just a house away 
when this all took place. So oh I was actually the one that, after everything happened where he ended up uh, taking his own life, I and, and let him know what was going on and what I had. And once I went inside, let him know that I had a second person. And ne it never went out as a call because you couldn't hear. You didn't hear the gunshot. Oh, no. Because it was muffled up against her actual, her, her body. And she was, she had a lot of girth. So it did not, you did not hear anything, anything outside. Because I was standing outside. So if I couldn't hear it standing outside, none of the neighbors heard it. Oh, my God. So let me ask you something. Did he? And, okay. So from what you're saying is he goes ahead, shoots her. Sounds like I'm really cl at really close range inside the house. Nobody yes. hears it, and he goes outside because he saw you, or or why? No, nope, he had no clue. Okay. So I think I she went to tell a neighbor what he did, and on the way back to his house is when he. I confronted him because I did not know what occurred because since you don't hear anything. Right. And at right. that point is when he raised the gun as I realized it was more here than just, you know, him going to a neighbor because it's something I originally thought something had happened to an animal because of all the, the animal noises I heard. So I thought maybe it was something happened with one of their pets and then he went to the neighbor to, for, for help. And that's so why me, I was going over okay. there. When you say the animals, what do you mean? The animals in the neighborhood or? A lot of, no, they had a lot of animals that was in the house. Uh, dogs and birds. So that's what you heard was a lot of dog barking and a lot of birds squawking. Oh, wow. So much so that you must have been like, what in the world is going on? Yeah, what came to my mind, one of them must have passed. Something happened with one of the animals. Animals got into a fight. Something where it made them all go into an uproar. What? Oh, my God. Okay. So it makes you wonder. When he went outside, did he see you? Or like he said, was he going to go tell a neighbor? God, I mean, sometimes you think about this and you really don't know what's going through this person's mind. And it almost sounds like, given the chance, he he might have killed somebody else, whether it was you or a neighbor or who knows. Talk about right. being the, never, never, the neighbor never opened the door, especially her, thank goodness he told her through the door and she did never open the door to him. Oh, he... He went to the neighbor's house. He actually got there. Yes, and knocked and and spoke to her because I this is I no clue what we had. I just was walking over there. I told the person I was speaking to, oh, "Let me go find out what's going on over here." And, and what did he uh, tell the neighbor? He told the neighbor, um, "I killed my wife, and I want you to know." Oh my god! And on the return back to the house is when I asked him what's going on do you need my help and that's when uh he raised the gun and it makes you think like wow i, I mean this person obviously was disturbed long before he actually oh, did absolutely. this but it makes you think like okay he killed her and he didn't shoot himself he actually went to the neighbor's house and and again it makes you wonder was his intention even though he told her i wanted to tell you Maybe this is the kind of person that was thinking, okay, when this person opens up the door, I'm going to yeah. shoot them. Well, I, and I think I surprised them because what happened happened. He went to the neighbor and was on his way home. So I'm yeah. sure he never thought that fast was going to be police. Yeah, it's like, man, they there. got here quick. Yeah, exactly. Like how? You know, it, it was he was confronted with a situation that probably was unexpected and um, you know what? And in my experience, this type of personality, the last thing they want is not to be allowed to kill themselves so that they go through having to be arrested, having to go through a trial. You know what I'm saying? And be faced with yes. what they did. Because even though I've understood he didn't have long to live, I say no still, more than six months is what I have understood. Really? OK, but still, at the end of the day, he wanted to prove that. The ultimate control and you know what i i heard about another story this was in another state and it i want to say it was uh kansas very similar a couple um two kids they were not his children they had apparently and, it, and what's really funny is this guy was a counselor hello but from what all appearances it was a good marriage 
but it was getting something weird was going on where she, I think she wanted out. But anyway, to make a long story short, he had gotten some type of communication where he was, I want to say it was either lung cancer or some type of terminal disease where when it was diagnosed, it was far advanced when he actually realized. And he did exactly that. He killed uh, his wife and both children that were not his and then himself. Well, no, I take that back. He didn't get to kill himself, but by the time that it went to court through trial, he had died. So in other words, he knew that right. he wasn't really going to go to jail for any length of time. In other words, he knew he was going to die, and which is very selfish because it was... And this was a relatively younger guy. When I say younger, I mean somebody, they were I think in their early 40s or something like that. And um, almost like the thought of it, she's going to divorce me, I'm going to be alone, plus I don't want, in other words, if I'm, to put it bluntly, I'm screwed because I have to die. Well, guess what? I'm taking, I'm not going to let that happen. It's it's incredible. And the, what's really funny is when you spoke to the neighbors and to the family, he seemed like a really nice guy, very quiet. He had a, a some type of job, I want to say a counselor in some type of mental health capacity, I don't know with what. And goes to show you that even though this guy sounds like he 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 had already been telling everybody that would listen what he was going to do. Okay. But that thing about the nine one one calls—that's incredible. Yeah, and, and it's not only the nine one one; it's the actual local police station. Because what I happens when they call? It's just what it, it 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 no what is it static or they hang up or what happens when the call completes or what? It's just an open line that because I've asked and um, they say no, they know what they already know the number. Oh God. Because it, it, you know, it, it, it displays, and they already know that there's not going to be anybody on the other side of that line. Can you but imagine that? that is, was... <laughs> and this is a line that you have to actually, like I told you, dial the full dial ten it. digit number. This is not a nine one one, and or it could be automatic. It's and then not. you ask it's, yourself, it's what gun. are the chances? I mean, this is not somebody that could say, "I'm going to do a crank a, a crank." call to fake out it's like this is the originating number in other words this phone number is not going to show up on the display unless that's where the call's originating from exactly and they're, they're they were used to it already it was oh it's this it's this number again so they still picked it up they still you know said this is law enforcement and, and how um, about the neighbors uh sam what happened after all these years is it the same neighbors or did anything ever happen afterwards where the neighbors called you guys no, never received calls from the neighbors about any of that. I just, I, from the last I saw, it was always the same vehicle. So I'm going to tell you, it's always been the same neighbors. Okay. Okay. So in other words, who's there now or, you know, all the, the years afterwards was the people that were originally when this happened. Wow. Yes. Yes. Okay. And even the person he spoke to, the last I know that um, she was still there. Let me tell you, smart person, don't open the door when somebody comes over, especially your disturbed neighbor, just to tell you that he Very just killed lucky. his wife. Wow. They're, they're lucky he didn't kill the animals because sometimes they even do that. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. so what else? Is... <laughs> I, was like, um, what? I know you've told well, me that in your station there's weird stuff that's going on, right? I was about right? to tell you, yes. Um, uh, several people, I have had an eerie feeling but never seen anything but multiple um officers and um administrators you know chiefs and stuff have seen someone either seen a person with a top hat or have seen a dark shadow walk from one office into another and when they look down the hall there is no one there wow and it's been multiply reported um of this dark shadow, or some have actually seen a tall man dressed in black with a top hat. Hat walking man. In the hall. I swear to God. You know what, Sam? This is so unusual because, you know, there's, there's this um, paranormal phenomena called hat man. Some people, it's shadow beings, oh. hat man. And then you have some versions where he's got, I've heard where he's hooded, other times where. It's a cowboy hat, and on occasion, I've heard exactly what you said. 
that it's a top hat that I remember making a joke when say going he's off going off to the opera and it's like he's seen in the places where you could say there is no connection whatsoever that you yep. could say well this used to be a theater okay and maybe this was somebody that was you know had a prop and it was a top hat as to why you would see that at a police station it just doesn't make sense at all exactly and the and that area has only been populated since the early 40s. Right. That's what I was about it's, to ask you. That's around the time that uh, – that's not even 100 years. It's in the 40s. It's not like way back when and yeah. – No. No. And it's, that's – it, and let's face it. Uh, uh, this is something that it's hard to overlook. Somebody with a top hat on. <laughs> Yes. Well, they they were frightened by it because they, they like, and the thing is that they actually discussed it amongst themselves. Like, okay, you saw that, right? So that they were <laughs> confirming it's not one person saw it. The people that were there in the conversation all saw the exact same thing. Exactly. And that's what I mean that it's like, and after a while, I mean, especially I'm going to say, I'm going to throw men under the bus. I know sometimes men have, they're the, sometimes they're the ones that get weirded out the most, but sometimes they have a really hard time admitting that they saw something like that. So yes. when they start, and besides that, there was also um, in the same station early October, and I don't know if it was associated to an employee that had passed. Okay, that I was a very good friend of mine. Okay, um, during those first two weeks in October, there's also a lot of activity at night in that station to the point that the person is there as a dispatcher by themselves all night in that station, have actually stepped outside, left the doors pried open, and sat outside in case they had to answer the phone and did not want to stay in the station because they kept hearing. They have an old holding cell back from the 1940s. They would actually hear the door being slammed shut. And that's unmistakable. You metal can't, gate. That's no, not you something can't, else you that you mistake for that. No. Uh-uh. Wow. <laughs> and they would be afraid. They're like, oh, there's something here. And they would, I'll be outside. They would tell us on the radio, I will be outside. And right. it's always those first weeks in October. And so it's like an anniversary thing. Kind yes. Of. And, and they already know it. They already expect it because they're, they were so used to having experienced that. And it, and it was during that time, which I don't know if it is associated. I don't know why it would be associated because it's not a person that ever frequent that area that went into that area that worked those kind of hours. Anyway, this is a gentleman that would, uh, you know, would fill in on the weekends during the day had always wanted to be an officer, but could not because he was a, a, a big man. Mm-hmm. And um, when he passed, he was made an honorary officer after his passing. Right. So that, I would think that would be his only, uh, love, I guess I could. And let me ask you, what, he for, passed in yeah. early October? Was that, is that the significance yes. of the date? Yes. Yeah. Exactly. And that's, and if you think about that, yeah, that's, that an, anniversary thing is very telling and very coincidental. And like you said, how can you mistake, I mean, let's face it, the slamming of, a cell, a cell door, and especially like that old kind, like you said, from the 1940s, like a holding cell, because that's what you guys got. That's where you put people until you take them elsewhere. Correct. I can imagine that. <laughs> no wonder. And uh, is it do you, is it at nighttime, like overnight or, or throughout the daytime? Or is it just because at night everybody's gone and that one person that's left behind the dispatcher has to listen to this thing going on. Wow. Uh, no, it was at night. Cause it, I, I'm sure if it would occur during the day, everyone would be still here because that, that metal door was really loud. Yeah. Really loud. Like you could, you knew that door was being shut when it was being shut. What? That is incredible. And I don't blame that person is like, I got to do this job, but okay, in case I have to make a run for it, I'm already outside the door. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, you would pull up and that person would be sitting outside with the radios in their hand, just sitting outside on a, on a little ledge, saying, I ain't going back in there. <laughs> yeah, and that's, see, that's, that's, that's when they're not faking it. That's because it's like, hey, I got no choice, but 
that's yeah that's a very good sign that they're really really scared and they just don't understand it's like i don't understand it i don't want to know what's in there i'm not gonna about to go there and find out so let me ask you um because i know have you um just out of curiosity has anything ever happened to anybody being held in the cell by any chance like throughout the years that you know of no no see no so you can't even pin it on any at all maybe maybe i think maybe one time i heard but it was way before the my time there um someone uh, hung themselves with a belt. That's why you have to take everything off of them, shoelaces, belts, and everything. Right. Because being that it was an old holding cell, it even had the cage above. Oh. It wasn't just the, there's a, it was like a, like a full cage. It almost looked like you know, a giant bird cage, I guess. I could right, it. right, right. Yes, I know So what it you had, mean. you know, so you, ha- we had that rule because I have understood that prior to me being there, someone, someone had, had hung, hung themselves, themselves there. Right, because they had those bars across the top. Correct. That's possible, but still, that thing about the anniversary date, that's too coincidental. That's too... And this was a person that had passion for the job, had wanted to be law enforcement his entire life. Right. But was unable to. So his closest to it was being a dispatcher. Right. It was like the unfulfilled desire, overriding desire that they had. That that this was the closest that they got to it. Yeah, and I believe it. I believe it. It's not like somebody, oh, I would like to, but somebody has really got their heart set on it. And things, it's just not in the cards for them. And then they die. There you go. Wow. But the agency did choose to make him an officer. So I know, at least. When at he least passed it in, call him a dispatcher. They called him an officer. That's nice. That's nice that they did that. That they recognize that this person's, dying wish for lack of a better word was that to that type of recognition but still at the same time it's like they stop by just to say hey don't forget about me it's always during those weeks and um have you ever had calls sam from people uh either calling about disturbances or things going on at houses that when you check it out there's nothing there or You find something unusual going on? Well, there was a call that we received for many years. Um, It was an old lady. She would always call, and it was to the point where, like, oh, here we go again. Here we go again. It was all the time, here we go again. Okay. She would always call of a man in a hospital gown standing by her clothesline. Oh, wow. She used to call all the time. Same call, same place, same person. And the officers would respond. They would check the yard, and there was never anybody there. So it's here. And then it was always that, oh, here we go again. Here she's calling again about the man in the backyard. She must not be well. That's what the uh, census was that she's not well, she's not well, she's not well. Right. Um, years go by, and get the call again. And uh, it wasn't me that responded, it was two other officers responded. And when they get there, they're thinking, oh, okay, of course, there's nobody in the backyard. Let's go let her know there's nobody. It was a young lady that opened the door. They told this young lady, let your grandmother know that he is not there. He goes, what do you mean, my grandmother? Yeah, the the lady that lives, he goes, no, 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 she she passed away. I bought this house, and uh, I'm the only one that lives here, and there was a man in my backyard. So, of course, they tell her. Oh, my God. So, basically, they they got another person. Oh. A new person living in the home who saw the exact same thing, same place, same man in a gown by the clothesline. So, of course, now these officers are like, oh. Yeah. It's not the crazy (laughs) old lady. This lady wasn't crazy. (laughs) So, of course, they proceeded to explain to her, listen, we've been getting this call for years and we thought something was wrong with the lady, but you're the new owner and you're seeing the exact same thing. That's what I was going to say. The description, did. besides it's a man in your backyard, it's a description was the same thing, right? Exactly. The man in the hospital room. So they proceeded to explain that to her. And from what I've understood, she actually had a blessing of the house and that call has not, did not go for, I want to Four or five years after that, I don't think I ever got that call. Wow. 
So base, so in other words, she realized, okay, makes you wonder even how many other times she might have thought she saw something. But let's face it, the, and it must have been solid enough that they actually thought that it was a real person in their backyard. Yes. Makes you wonder what the yes. history of that house was, if it was a prior owner. Um, what some people thought after, especially after the fact, was it was the older lady, uh, the, the original owner's husband had passed in the hospital. Okay. So that's what they were thinking. Well, maybe it's her husband who passed that, that's in the backyard. Yeah. Because I, I want to tell you it was an older man that they would say. It wasn't like a young man. It wasn't, you know, they could right. tell it was an older man. Right. And that's so. Like, yes, the officers were very surprised. They were like in shock. Can you imagine like, that oh my poor goodness. old lady? All these years, she's <laughs> everybody's yeah. thinking, "Oh, that crazy lady! Here she goes again." Wow. Yeah, she just wants attention. She, she needs somebody to attention. talk to. <laughs> Can she change what the reason that we're going out there for? It's the guy in the backyard again. And yes. did she? How often was she calling? Sam, was it like every month or every week, or how often was she calling in and seeing that, saying that she saw this guy? No, it was just a couple of times of the year. I okay. would say three, four, maybe in a year. But enough times that you guys were like, "Here we go again." Yeah, and we never really—I don't think we ever even discussed it. This fine. Was there a pattern? Was it a certain month? Was it a certain time or nothing? I mean, always it was at night. That it was. It was definitely at night, but right. not on a specific month or anything like that. Wow. And that, see, that, that is, and like what you said, the, I'm sure that, that new owner, talk about, see, that's the kind of story that when you hear it adds validity because here there's no connection between these two people. And all of a sudden, this new person is seeing what this other person used to see. Yeah, it's like, what are the chances of that? That's and a, no, then she said she was going to do a blessing, and after that, we stopped. never received that call anymore. It stopped. It stopped. Now, let's face yeah. it. There's, there's got to be nothing scarier than to see not somebody not only in your front yard, but in the backyard of your house. All right? And because the first thing you're thinking is somebody's trying to break into my house, because otherwise, what would they be in the backyard? So Yes. Or a peeping Tom staring or a from the, Tom, yeah. by where the clothes are. I think that's how we used to receive it, you know, the... the even though man that description is really weird in a hospital gown, the first thing you're thinking is, man, this is somebody that got out <laughs> from from some, uh, maybe a psych ward or something. Who knows? I mean, Exactly. That's probably what it's because you see the gown. Yeah. Yes, of course. That is such a great. See, that, and that's what I'm saying, that when it's happening, nobody really chalks it up to being either paranormal or unnatural. It's after the fact that everybody thinks back and says, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> Wasn't this the yeah. same house that we used to get that that call for? Wow. And I know I know you've mentioned to me that, and, and I'm going to throw the men under the bus some t- again, that <laughs> even though men have a hard time admitting sometimes that they see or witness something, when they do, it wigs them out totally. Uh, have you ever had any of the other officers come and tell you something? Because I know that you're looked at as somebody that has a good head on her shoulders, but that you're willing to listen. There's one guy that always says that at our station, the same gentleman with the top hat, they would see him upstairs because there's a staircase. And at the top of the staircase, is, you know, you, you actually enter through below the staircase. It's where you enter into the back of the of the station okay. that he would always see the man standing up there that he would always glance up because he would see the man in the dark in the, uh, wearing the dark um, suit with the top hat standing down, l- uh, looking down. Wow. It was always the same one gentleman that would see this person. See. No one else had ever seen that had seen him up there, but other people had seen him down, uh, downstairs in, in the hallways. He's the only one that sees him upstairs is what you're saying. Correct. And I used to always, like, just glance up as I'm walking in. Like, you know, you get a sense that somebody's looking at you, and I would glance up, but there, would be any, there wouldn't be anything there. It's just that sense that somebody's watching. And I would glance up and then go in, but I never saw anybody up there. Oh, crap. 
Kelly. I don't know if it's because he said it or was it that I actually sent something? Because once you, you know you're told, you're like, oh, is there the person there? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And one of the things that I know that in that area, you know, that, 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 that the department covers, there's, from what I understand, a lot of people stay there for a long time. And then, yeah, you get people that come in. But overall, the residents there have been there for a long time. So after a while, you get to know who's who as far as yes. who lives in the neighborhood or in that area. Yes, when I first started working there, I actually met the very first resident of that city who had the certificate that said they were the first original resident of the area. Wow. That's, see, that's, that, that speaks volumes because nowadays everybody's very transient. But that's one of the things I know that that area is, is a very, even though it's from the 40s, it's a very nice area to live in. It's very sought after as far as a, for a place to live at, um, as far as buying the residence. And, and I know that everybody, even the homes, they remodel them. They're, they're beautiful. They're beautiful. And um, let me ask you, have you ever, ever had calls about unusual things on the streets or anything like that? Because that's, that's what, and I guess my point is the following. It's, the kind of area that neighbors know who's who or what's normal. You understand what I'm saying? Like right. if they see there's somebody strange or something going on, they're going to realize, wow, that's, that's not normal. And they call the police, not like, okay, I'm not going to call the police. It's nothing. I mean, I, I mean, you do get a lot of volume because this, this is an area where if there's anybody in the street, they're going to call the police. It's not they're like, oh, it's okay. There's a person walking down the street. Right. They call. But um, most of those original owners have already since passed or moved away. Or moved away, yeah. Yeah. But still, it's, it's. Uh, I mean, because I, I know exactly, you know, the area that we're talking about that uh, people over there, I care about what's going on, and that's why I'm saying sometimes I know that, especially like that call that you had about the guy with the, with the hospital guy in the backyard. That you get, you know, you immediately get a call about. And, and, and as a matter of fact, I was even going to ask you: Was she the only one that kept saying? And she, from what you're telling me, she was the only one that kept calling about the guy in the backyard. Which, of course, later on, it turned out that that she was right. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Her and then the new the new, and then the owner, new, then after the new her. owner. And I know that let me ask because I wanna I wanna say that <clears throat> many, many, many years ago, wasn't there also something about um an officer that passed away? Yes. We had a officer that had a motorcycle accident back in 1960 something okay that had passed and they actually named a road after him okay and in this department he was the only officer that had lost his life on the in the line of duty wow and to this day he is still from the only officer that was lost which from that is agency. fantastic nowadays um because of what's happening it's incredible and i don't know i don't know if you did you hear about that uh they shot one of the commanders in Chicago in the Chicago PD today. The guy with 30 years on. They yes, killed. I did hear about that. That's that's horrible. That's horrible. You know, that's why I'm yeah, saying that. Yeah, I brought that up because the fact that you've only, you, which I hope you keep that record, that you guys have only lost one officer speaks volumes right there because of... Yes. Unfortunately, that's... I mean, officers have been involved in shootings, but have been fortunate they have not been injured. Right, right. Well, you know, the thing is that even though you don't want it to happen, you know that chances are, you know, like you, like exactly like what happened to you, either either because you go out on a call or like what you said that day that you just happened to go by and there's this guy that's just killed his wife and comes out with a gun and... Yeah very easily could have killed you or any other officer if they weren't aware or uh, realized yeah, something's going to on. ran in the house because they, the person that I would have been speaking to, I guess, realized it before I did what he had in his hand and they were gone. Right. 
And that's why I'm saying that nowadays, you know, the, 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 the things can happen. That That's what I'm saying, that just having lost one officer all these years, that's great. That's a fantastic record because, like I said, whether it's something like this out and out shooting of an officer or part of, you know, like almost like what a lot of what's happening with like people that respond or officers that respond to domestic violence calls that it's like, oh my God, you never know what you're going to find when you get out there. Uh, you know, some murder, suicide things and things of this nature. And, uh, and then, you know, like that officer is there talk about, they get, they, they, they cross paths with somebody who, uh, either is going to kill themselves or what they call that suicide by police. You know, they're hoping that the police is going to just, you know, kill them. So, and if not, yeah. sometimes they take it on the officer. So yeah, it's, it's, it's scary. A lot of people don't realize even, even in, um, nice neighborhoods or areas you could still run across stuff like that it doesn't always have to be and i'm sure you you know you've run across that yourself because there's no perimeter fence on the area of your department you know you can't have anybody come in from you know trying to escape from from anywhere and runs in there and then all of a sudden he become he or she becomes your headache so you know you never know you never yeah. know what what the day will bring. But um, I know that I'm trying to think because I remember one of the stories that you told me and I can't remember. God, I can't remember now. And um, it'll come to me probably after I finish up with you. <laughs> but anyway, you know, what? I was actually curious of going back to that house and seeing yes, what's there. And even if it's standing outside, because she passed away inside the house. Yeah. She passed away in front of the driveway. Is that is the yard fenced? No. Okay. No. The backyard, but not the front yard. The f- but right. he actually passed in the, actually not the, the driveway, in the walkway, but on the property. On the property. And that's why I had asked you because it makes you wonder. And sometimes it's not even that if it's an intelligent, but stuff like that sometimes leaves an impression, you know, if, if you had ever had any of the neighbors say, oh, you know what, I saw somebody standing out in the drive, you know, that kind of thing. Be- but obviously, I hate to say it, but especially because of the 911 calls, it almost it almost makes you think that if anybody's there, it's not him, it's her. Right. She was the one in the home. Right. She was the one in the home. And let's face it, she was victimized. She She's the one that got murdered. He, this is, yes. like you said, she, he knew he was, he knew that he was going to die. Like within a few months at the worst, at the most. But it was like. The, the vivid image I have is of her, her face, not his. His I saw, really, I remember more the pictures I saw, you know, when the whole case, uh, even though it was pretty much a closed, open and closed case, but you know, they still have to investigate. Right. Um, I have more vivid image of her when I went in there trying to assist her. Right. Than I do of him. And it was apparent what when you saw her that she was deceased, right? That she was she had passed oh, away. Yes. Yes. It was. Uh, he, he he must have shot her directly in the artery of the neck. Okay. You could see the black where where yeah, that's why you knew that it made contact with the skin because it had the black foot mark around it. That's incredible. I mean, and that's, I mean, and and I guess my point is that, despite the fact that you like you said that maybe he had threatened her, or made statements, but when you're, maybe she knew it. Or she didn't, or she kind of knew it, but then never thought about it. It's the fact that he actually did it, I guess, is one of those things like, you know, maybe you spent so many years with this person saying, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, even if he was verbally abusive, but that they actually do do it. And she, obviously, she knew that he was sick, right? That he was had some type of terminal illness? I don't know if she already knew that, ah. if she was made aware. I I. I don't think she was even aware of when the gunshot came because I don't think it was the ongoing argument. I think they had had that argument and he came back because 
she was in a way where it didn't look like she was in a confrontation. Right, right. Like sitting down. So it looks like she probably had her back when, when it happened, which I'm, I guess for her is better than not be aware than that frightening of what's going to happen to you. Yeah, I guess he was trying to do the last kindness. Wow. Mighty nice of him. But huh? he was that heavy of a drinker that what he had was cirrhosis of the liver. God, that speaks volumes right there. That speaks volumes. That's a lot of drinking. Mm -hmm. To the point that it's terminal. In other words, that they were telling him. Yes. And, and they lived there by themselves with the account. animals and stuff? Yes. The only thing I knew that, she, unfortunately, her mother was still alive and was very elderly. Wow. That's a, that's a very difficult thing. But... You know what? It makes you think at some point if this mom, despite as, as much as she had to have worried about her daughter, even though she was an adult, probably at some point knew that something like this could happen. Oh, like, yes. I'm sure her daughter told her and she probably just never listened to her mother. Please. Yeah. You know, things like this and, and you know, and like you said, he was a nice guy and... Uh, and it makes you, and I want to say this, I know that you said that, you know, he had that Jekyll and Hyde thing going on. And when he I was wasn't about drinking, to use those same words, <laughs> he was a nice guy and that's why he didn't get the cops called on him. But you know what? I bet you that there's a part of that, that I wonder if there's neighbors that said, I'm not going to call the cops on this guy because this man's liable to come over here and do something to me. And it's not going to be worth the trouble. True. Because I don't know if says I I didn't participate in that investigation of the the murder suicide. Um, if their neighbors were aware of how heavily fired uh, he was uh, armed he was in armed. the house, because I know they had to go in there and they had to remove a lot of firearms from within that home. And this is the thing: this guy lived in this beautiful, nice neighborhood area it's not like hey i live in this really crime-ridden area so i need a lot of heavy firepower in case i need to like protect my family exactly it's like and, and, and you know can you imagine maybe his neighbors that knew him a little bit better talk to him they were aware this guy has a drinking problem he's not wound too tight plus he has a lot of firearms okay and they're thinking if i ever call the cops on this guy I got to stay here and live next to him. The next thing I know, this man might come over here and blow my head off. Which is another good reason why maybe people were like, hey, mind your own business. Forget it. You know, I would hate, I would yeah. love to help this lady out, but forget it. They've been married for 30 years. And I don't want to get involved. It happens that way sometimes. So, yes. That is okay, Sam. I'm gonna let you go because I know you got to be someplace, and we talked about this before. But I want to thank you so much. We got to do this again. You know that I've talked about different things that we got to do a show on. And if you can't be here, then we could do this over the phone. It's great. I've got a lot of good ideas, and we've talked about it. But I'm not gonna let the cat out of the bag and say what it's about. Okay. So. Thank you for having me, and it will be my pleasure. Hopefully, okay. we maybe can even go back into that house and uh, look yes, into that Yes, I want to do that. I wanted to, wouldn't it be great if I could live stream, especially so I don't have, like, my little dog uh, having a little meltdown here next to me? But anyway, okay, let me let you go so you can do your thing, okay? Take care. Thanks so much, okay? No, thank you, Marlene. Bye-bye. Have a good one. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay, wow. And um, let me tell you something. I think that my little dog is having a moment here. Um, and that was just like a little, I, I know there's other stories that she's told me. I just couldn't remember them. And I know she had to go somewhere. And But anyway, can you imagine <laughs> that 911 thing? I can imagine that people, when that call comes in, it's like, <laughs> oh, shit. Um and also that thing about uh, the cell and, and that anniversary. And you, you, you have, um, and sometimes, even though I asked her, 
usually sometimes in the middle of the day when people are coming and going and you know you got the public maybe coming into the station maybe things are going on people just don't catch on but there's nothing like being the only person in the building <laughs> and you're hearing something like a jail cell door bang especially one of those old ones think about it by the way that station is i i i know what dimensions we're talking about it's not a huge station there's it's like smaller so in other words, it can't be like, oh, something at the other end of the building. And it was, no, 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 no. What you hear is what it is. And that thing with a top hat, a hat man. And I, as a matter of fact, in another show, I talked about it where back in the 80s, I had a coworker. And uh, she's one day, we're on the subject of ghosts and stuff like this. And she was a teenager. She was living with her parents in an apartment of all places a two-bedroom apartment and she says that one day she sees a guy exactly like what he she described a guy dark with a top hat and she says she got a really bad feeling bottom line I think like within a year a few months her mom had passed away her mom had a heart condition her mom passed away and well anyway and I remember telling her I go god that is so unusual because if you say well I see a shadow or I see this you go oh okay but this is in other words the sightings of the hat man especially the one with the top hat that's the one that gets to me they're seen in the most what's the word I'm thinking of not inappropriate but the most likely place that you would think okay why am I seeing maybe a ghost or whatever with a top hat again if you're talking to theater if you were maybe the um, living or situated in a really old part of town where maybe once upon a time guys ran around with top hats on maybe it dated back to that maybe but again you heard this place has been since the 40s I know the apartment building that my friend may be dated from the 70s 80s again and again nobody's going to be running around with a top hat <laughs> and um that's 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 really and that they see him going uh you know when you have these hallways where you have entrances to different cube you know offices so they see him and then you see this one guy that sees him on the second floor of the building and that tells you right there that is it something tied to the building something that happened there before could it possibly be tied to the guy that hung himself in that cell I mean even then sometimes things happen that never get documented I mean way before her time who knows a lot of things it could account for a lot of things and you know a lot of people they talk about the sightings of the hat man not all the time, but equivalent, almost, I don't want to say the exact same thing, but uh, almost as on the same level as um, like Mothman. Like, in other words, he's seen around either areas where bad things have happened, have happened, or will happen, or like almost like they're like the messenger, something that gives you uh, like a warning kind of thing. In other words, it's not a good thing to see half man. That's why I guess what I'm saying. And so it makes you think if you've got one that's there all the time, I wonder what that means. And I, I'm going to definitely follow up on going to that house that has been unoccupied for almost 20 years, which I'm telling you right now, that house is prime real estate. Okay, whether it's for rent or for sale, the thought that that place has never been sold that's really really unusual Uh, I gotta follow up on that you guys are gonna catch me out there whether it's live or after the fact you guys are gonna catch me out there watch watch because there's something there that's just like I said you know you you, you'll get some some owners that let things cool off for maybe a one or two years if if their pockets can afford it um and then they, they try to dispose of the property, either rent it out again. But when 
you've been going, it's going to be almost 20 years, maybe 17. That's a long time. Hmm. So anyway, guys, I hope you like the show. I apologize. I tried to live stream. This did, did not work. I don't know what's going on with my bandwidth. I don't know what to tell you. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for being part of my audience. You're all wonderful. Uh, make sure to catch me on Facebook, Twitter. I live stream there a lot. Uh, if um, Don't forget, to your, my true believers, to submit your stories, your experiences at MiamiGhostChronicles.com. Uh, go to Submit Your Story tab. And, uh, you know, whether you're seeing the show on the uh, on the Internet or you're catching me on podcasts, subscribe to uh, my channel so that you get notifications of when I release a new video or a new podcast. Either way, I'm all over the place. If you don't catch me on YouTube, I'm on iTunes, I'm on uh, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, Stitcher every place just look for Miami Ghost Chronicles Stories of the Supernatural and you will find a podcast version of the show all right so guys and guys thank you so much you're wonderful until the next time thank you so time so much for spending some time with me